What you are looking at is formerly classified film footage of a nuclear submarine control training simulator, specifically for the Lafayette class, nuclear sub number 616 of 1961. The original film had no audio content. This narration provides some background on the nature and purpose of this training facility. This training simulator shown here was located at the U.S. Naval Base in Charleston, South Carolina, at the Fleet Ballistic Missile Submarine Training Center in the Edwards Hall building. Edwards Hall was the first training center built to train crews of Polaris missile submarines. The equipment contained inside the building was a duplication of the attack center installed in a Fleet Ballistic Missile Submarine. In this film, the center console is the trainer's control board, where he can create different scenarios to see how the trainees respond to various situations, warning buzzers and alarms. This created a realistic training environment. The period from 1960 to 1964 was a crucial time in the Cold War, marked by an escalating arms race. Charleston's role as a major hub for training and logistics was instrumental in rapid and thorough training of a large but specially qualified number of naval personnel. The Charleston base was one of the two main Atlantic home ports for the Polaris submarines, alongside New London, Connecticut. The training conducted there directly contributed to the operational success of the submarine fleet, which successfully completed hundreds of deterrent patrol operations. This training center in Charleston was vital for building the technical expertise and operational proficiency of the crews, ensuring the submarines were ready for their critical mission of maintaining strategic deterrence. The main purpose of the U.S. Ballistic Missile Fleet in the early 1960s was to serve as a cornerstone of the nation's nuclear deterrence strategy during the Cold War tensions. It was essentially a defensive posture designed to avoid actual conflict. The Lafayette class was at that time the largest and most capable ballistic missile submarine in the world and provided a formidable defensive shield. This simulator was built by Republic Aviation Corporation's Hydrospace Systems Division under a top-secret project for the U.S. Navy during the Cold War. Republic Aviation was a major defense contractor with extensive expertise in complex systems integration, electronics, and human-machine interfaces, and high-fidelity simulators for highly specialized defense projects. The Lafayette 616 was the lead in its class of nuclear submarines, requiring a very high level of skill for stealth maneuvering and strategic positioning of defensive nuclear missile capabilities during the Cold War as part of the Polaris missile projects. The official launch was a highly publicized event, with First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy doing the champagne launch dedication with numerous officials in attendance. As seen in these film excerpts, the internal controls were a complex collection of electrical, electronic, and digital controls requiring sophisticated human monitoring and interaction in potentially long-term submersive and strategic activities. The USS Lafayette itself was created during the Cold War as part of the 414 Freedom Initiative, which was a multi-pronged defensive program to commission 41 nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines between 1959 and 1967 which formed the backbone of the U.S. Navy's nuclear deterrent force. The construction of the USS Lafayette SSBN-616 was carried out by the Electric Boat Division of General Dynamics in Groton, Connecticut. Construction began in 1961. The ship was officially launched in 1962 and commissioned in May 1963. It served for three decades, finally being decommissioned in August 1991. The ship was 425 feet long, nearly 130 meters, and held a complement of approximately 14 officers and 126 crew for a total of 140 personnel. Top submersed speed was originally classified, but was later estimated at 30 knots or about 45 miles per hour, which was very fast at the time. However, their primary mission was stealth and long-term submerged endurance 
to act as a hidden platform for nuclear missiles. The boat often sacrificed higher speed for quieter operation, making it a more valuable strategic deterrent in the overall umbrella of defensive armament. Much of the computer technology on board was a collection of highly specialized electromechanical and analog systems. Their primary function was to solve complex real-time calculations necessary to enable the submarine to perform its mission, which was to fire missiles with pinpoint accuracy from a moving submerged platform. These systems were the technological heart of the vessel, translating the motion of the ship into precise data for missile launch. The ship's inertial navigation system, or SINs, was an integral component of the fleet ballistic missile program. The SINs continuously measured the submarine's motion without the need for external references. It was developed by the MIT Instrumentation Laboratory in collaboration with Sperry Gyroscope Corporation. The design of the navigation system was a direct parallel to the Apollo guidance computer, which had also been developed by the MIT Instrumentation Laboratory. In addition to navigation systems, the Mark 88 fire control system aboard these submarines represented a revolutionary leap in military technology, marking a fundamental transition from the electromechanical analog computers of the past to a fully digital computing system. The Mark 88's digital architecture provided a level of automation and reliability that was previously unattainable. The system's efficiency was directly tied to the ability of the digital fire control system to perform calculations and manage the complex launch sequence in near real time. The Mark 88 was a central element of the confidential weapon systems, working in conjunction with other critical subsystems, all very advanced for that time period. In contrast to early military computers such as the NTDS, Naval Tactical Data Systems machines weighing 2,000 pounds and occupying nearly 60 cubic feet of space, the ongoing evolution to newer guidance systems employing transistorized and later integrated circuits provided the necessary miniaturization for a submarine environment. Today, as these technologies have become largely surpassed by even more advanced solutions, this snapshot in time shows some of the hands-on training that navigators and pilots underwent to help ensure these early programs achieved their intended mission goals as part of an overall defensive network. It is important to note that the digital and electronic systems on board were part of a wider technological landscape that included a sophisticated sensory network, such as the vast undersea sound surveillance system known as the SOSIS network, which was a system of passive sonar arrays deployed on the ocean floor to track enemy submarines. The Lafayette class was eventually retired and replaced by the larger and more capable Ohio class submarines. The last active Lafayette class submarine to be decommissioned was the USS Woodrow Wilson on September 1, 1994. Today, the Navy's Submarine Warfare Federated Tactical System, or SWFTS, oversees the combat and tactical control aspects of the ballistic and guided missile submarines. New technology continues to be integrated into the submarines and related systems, including using carefully selected commercial off-the-shelf hardware, software, or other components that are readily available in the commercial market. This approach may bring its own set of challenges and opportunities. Also, as a result of the 1994 Nuclear Posture Review Program, the Navy currently has 14 ballistic missile submarines in active service. These are the remaining Ohio-class submarines that were not converted to guided missile subs per the program. The Ohio-class is currently the largest ballistic missile submarine class in the world. The other countries with active ballistic missile subprograms include Russia, China, United Kingdom, France, and India. We hope you enjoyed this vintage film presentation. Please feel free to leave any thoughts or comments in the comments section. For more information, see the official website for the Naval Education and Training Command, NETC. This ends the narrated portion of our film excerpt. The final two minutes are without sound. We hope you have enjoyed this rare inside look 
at a training simulator from the 1960s Lafayette-class ballistic missile submarine. Thank you for watching.